I'm so happy to have you here. It is so good to see you, and congratulations. You are doing an incredible job. Thank you so much. Incredible. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I do not take that lightly coming from you. I've always looked up to you as an artist, as a vocalist. So I'm happy to have you here. Wow, you thank you. Yes, ma'am, girl. Good. <laughs> and not to mention, we both are, were assigned to Clive David. Absolutely. I was telling people the other day, and I had to kind of prepare my son because I took him with me. Uh -huh. I said, now, everybody that you run into is going to start pulling out old photos of me, and they're going to tell you <laughs> over and over that they've known me all my life. Uh -huh. When I got signed, I was not 12 years old yet. So the, the records that you hear, like Just One oh of Them goodness. Days and Why I Love You So yes. Much, I recorded all those records at 12 and 13 years old. Really? Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Like, how did that happen so young? Well, for me, it started really simplistic. Mm -hmm. I like to win. Come on. And what happened was I have a very competitive, very, very incredible aunt uh -huh. by the name of Laura. Uh -huh. And she is the type of church member that pretty much runs all the boards. <laughs> and <laughs> since she ran church. every component, yes. she, she talked to me one day about, she said, you know, the, the voice mm -hmm. is so special. Yes. And she took me to the trophy store and she said, would you like this one? Oh. And it was about this big. Or would you like this one? And it was as tall as I was. Mm. So I say, I want that one. And I sang The Greatest Love of All, and at nine years old, that feeling of watching people respond to me when I'm singing, yes. it changed my life, it changed my perspective, it changed how I felt, because I was a child that experienced a whole lot, mm -hmm. and singing was just my peace and solace for myself. And then I saw that I could kind of transition that to other people and I just fell in love with it. So the day that I got signed or that I was discovered, I, I entered a talent show at the center stage because I wanted the $1,000. Mm. Again, I told y'all I like to win. You to win the money. I like to win. Yeah. I like to win. And it was, it, that was my focus, but God aligns everything the way that it's supposed to be and the way that it's supposed to go. Everything about my life changed immediately. Mm, mm, that I was there amazing. for one reason. Yes. Something else happened. Yes, God yeah. had so much more <laughs> yes. in store. Okay, yeah. where do you get your soulfulness from, your voice from? My family. Mm -hmm. My mother's entire family sings. And okay. the choir is actually named after my grandfather, Alfonso Page Chorus. Hmm. So when we sang, we sang with our hearts. When you're singing for the glory of God, if you really have faith and believe what you're singing, yes. it feels different. And I take that into secular music with me. Now, there are some songs mm -hmm. that require more than others, mm -hmm. especially after you've been through a thing you or two. Know so I sang So Gone from a different place Come on. than I sang Why I Love You So Much. Right. But they were still places of conviction. You said that. It reminds me of when I was growing up in church. I sang my first solo at seven. Mm. And I used to walk around the church talk to the choir director and whoever, and I'll be like, okay, but what is the song about? <laughs> you know, because we know when we sing it in church, it comes from a different place. Right. You're singing for a different purpose. Right. Or if you're singing for a talent show versus, uh, I mean, a film. You right. know, it has different contexts. So I, right. I feel you on that tip. Now, what I want to know, like, okay, it's take me back to your hits. Like, don't take it personal. One of my favorites is, baby, that's why I love you so much. That was my song, wow. okay? Yes. I used to try to imitate you. Do you understand? It's the neck roll, it's in the <laughs> neck. Cause you know, most people sing from here, almost like in the diaphragm, <laughs> but I think I sing from my neck you do. or something. You do, I do, I can't control it. When I try to control it, I don't sound as good. <laughs> If I just let it go, let it then go. it works. Then it's but, there. you know, that song I actually sang thinking about my father. At the time, he and I weren't speaking, uh -huh. and not because of him, totally because of me not understanding until I became a parent what it took to be a parent. And sometimes we are, we're not, we don't grant as much grace because we don't understand it. That's we haven't true. been there. So I was estranged from him, and I sang Why I Love You So Much with the conviction you hear thinking about him because regardless of what we ever went through, I always loved my dad. Mm, mm -hmm. So I found ways to just make those things make sense for me. Yeah. Now, if a song don't make sense at all, I don't sing it. I understand that. Yeah. If it doesn't make sense at all, Because if it don't not, resonate with us, period. we can't expect it to resonate period. with the listener. Exactly. He's such a true musician, young lady. <laughs> yes. Okay. Tell me this. Who did you listen to growing up? Ooh. I listened to all the gospel greats. My very first cassette, because that's what it was in the 80s. My very first cassette in 1987 or 88 maybe, 
was from one of my mom's closest friends, mm. and it was BB and CC Winans. They were your mom's closest friends. Yes, you slipped right past that. Yes, it was. Well, my mom's friend, who's now deceased, she said this girl is special mm -hmm. and she bought me all of this music but the one that I was totally addicted to was BB and CC Winans and I still listen to Lost Without You every mm. single day because we have to remember to whom we belong mm -hmm. or it's easy to get lost so I enjoy listening to all the gospel greats I absolutely adore the Clark sisters we all do yes. adore them adore them yes those are my honorary aunties yeah you know those are my honorary Detroit aunties and uh, they don't mind giving you love and grace while scolding you, which mm -hmm, I've needed over mm -hmm, the years, mm -hmm. very much so. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And um, Just For Me by Karen Clark Sheard is one Ooh, of my absolute I favorites. I love that song. Yeah, we have to remember that God's love is for all of us. Come on. Yes, we you, have you, to. You sound like an evangelist over here. No, don't I you can, do that. I That's my it. mom. Don't do that. I feel it. I'm not there yet. Before I go to your number one hit on the billboards, which is, uh, baby, I got to ask you about what was your first solo in church? My first solo? Do you remember that? I don't recall because the first I'm told I was only three years old. Three? I was only three years old, and uh, Safe in His Arms is the one I remember most because at the age of 11, I joined a choir that actually had a lot of incredible singers you know in it. Uh, but we were all from College Park, Southside, Atlanta, Georgia. Who and were some of those artists, Monica? The Scott Sisters. Come on. Tamika Scott, Latasha Scott from Miss Kate. Yeah, we all, we all had this camaraderie amongst us, but I was the youngest. Mm. So a lot of them nurtured me in the process, but Safe in His Arms is the one that I remember the most. Wow. Monica, you were 17 years old when The Boy Is Mine topped the charts at number one. <laughs> you and Brandy. <laughs> yes, y'all remember that? You can tell me I wasn't y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. And then I got to watch you guys reunite on Versus. Yes. And I heard Michelle Obama was on there watching too. What that make y'all feel like? I was in shock because honestly, I was afraid of doing the Versus, mm -hmm. not afraid of anything other than the fact that I enjoy people now understand that they can love us both. Yes. And I didn't want to do anything that reignited the feelings of yesteryear, you can love Monica and Brandy. Mm -hmm. She is mm -hmm. the consummate professional. Yep. An amazing, I mean, amazing singer, songwriter. Her tone is next to none. We're not to be compared. We're yes. polar opposites. Yes. We have completely different backgrounds and upbringings. Our subject matters are typically different. I don't understand why people don't understand they right. can love both. Yes. And so that was my reservation, but after talking to her and Larry Jackson, who you know as well, oh, I, yes. Swiss Beats and everybody that was involved, they said it will be a celebration of music. It is. And that was yeah. our goal in that moment. So I'm glad that we did it and we did it in Atlanta where I'm from. Listen, I'm grateful that y'all did it. You know what I mean? It was necessary. Yeah. You both are icons. Listen, oh y'all, my girls, my girls, my girls. You co-wrote a song recently with Sierra. Let, her... <laughs> Let me tell you what actually happened. Tell me. This is where the friendship matters. She and I have been in each other's lives since the early, early 90s. Uh -huh. Okay, this was prior to her being in the music business. So, of course, I'm enjoying the mom, the wife, the friend that she's become just mm -hmm. over the years because no better teacher than experience. Right. So the more we experience, the greater we grow together. So I'm telling her, I have this record and I no longer feel the way I used to about who this record is about. Uh -huh. How can I make this make sense? And she just starts melody after melody and word after word, and that's how it happened. It wasn't a structured situation where we sat down and just said, we're gonna write a song. I play her a lot of my music and vice versa, mm -hmm. and I said, listen, these, these lyrics need to change because this is not how Auntie felt right now uh -huh. in comparison to how I felt eight, nine months ago, yes. right? And she just said, it's okay, Why you don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> that, that's her position all the time. Yes. I'm the storm, she's the calm. Oh, so she just kind of calmed the storm and we came up with a different way to convey the feelings so that they matched my heart in that moment. Nice. Yeah. Well, congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you. <laughs> You've done so many great things and it's been so inspiring just watching your career. So what can we expect next from you? We have a lot coming up. I have been Unfortunately, very slow mm. 
at creating my last album. So slow that it was initially named Chapter 38 and I'm 43. <laughs> so it's been a minute. But you know the school we come from, we work until we get it right. That's right. I never put out records every year because I wanted them to feel a certain way. I wanted them to be timeless. I wanted them to be records that you could play. You hear so going on TikTok mm -hmm. now, when I tell the kids, you weren't born right. when this song came out, it's hard for them to understand because the music is timeless. And that's all it is. In real life, has been happening. I lost two of my uncles. Sorry a lot has happened within my family. And for me, family comes first. Right. It's before and over everything with the exception of God himself. So I just have taken a while. So we got to get this album out. And I'm also putting out my country album, Open Road. Come on. That is, yeah. I love that for you. Yeah. I'm so excited about it because <laughs> I was really welcomed. Uh, Jimmy Allen I did a record with and I performed at the CMT Awards. Mm. And after the welcome was so strong, but the most exciting part is that it's executive produced by Brandi Carlile. Mm. And she is someone that I absolutely adore from the depths of my heart. So yes. it's a real country album. Wow. It's not an R&B girl doing country music. It's a country girl I doing know you country got music. music. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm from Georgia. Oh my, you <laughs> better tell it. Now your son is here with you, Romello. You have four kids, but you got one of your good kids with you here today. Hello. What's up? What's up? Aww. Oh my God. Like, what is it like hanging out with your mom? Stand on up and talk to me. It's great hanging with my mom. You know, she has a very inspiring story. Like, she left home when she was young, and I feel like I kind of relate to it a lot. So I like coming with my mom to these things a lot. Wow. And you went to the pre-Grammy with her recently? Yes, ma'am. What was you expecting, and what did you end up experiencing? I was expecting a lot of, like, old people. <laughs> <laughs> He's not like, what's up? But I see, ah, like, that is hilarious. Uh-huh. I, I see some young people. Like, I see Ice Spice. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he, saw, he saw all of Ice Spice because she gave a quick twerk for the people. Oh, good. And so I look over and he goes from sitting very attentive to like, okay, yeah. with oh, the phone Oh, you put that the phone. Yeah, I woke up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's actually my youngest son. Oh, really? I, I have three sons, 28, 18, and he's 16. Oh. And, yeah. Beautiful family. And for him... It's really interesting because he attends a, a basketball academy called OTE, yeah, Overtime Elite. You Your boo came and visited oh, us. Oh, my goodness, yeah? I'll tell you about it later. Okay, tell Comet me about was it. there. <laughs> I was watching. I had the eyes on him, okay? Yes, no one speak to him. Keep it moving. That's my girl, Jennifer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hey, but buddy. he came to, to see the school and see some of the fellas. It's amazing because it preps them for college and the league. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's still very much a place where academics are important, but he was here for work as well. So wow. him resonating with me leaving home so early, it, it's really happening in his life as well because they travel as a team and they compete at a completely different level than you'll ever see at, at a high school. So he was here for work and I'm like, you wanna go with me and just stay with me? Because I'm learning to spend that individual time too. I love that. Are we old people? Like, am I young enough? <laughs> uh, do I get any cool points? See, I have a son too. But I gotta ask you, what do you play? What position you play? I play point guard. Point guard? <laughs> oh, I need to come see that. I know we're gonna expect some great things from you, young man. You look like, look at him right here. Oh, Let's go! Serious, you better Let's have- Let's go, Mello! Okay, see, with all that energy, what kind of basketball mom are you? Because I know what kind I am. You do not want to sit at the same game. I'm, um, let me say, I'm not the ref's favorite. I'm not the ref's favorite, but I'm definitely the team's favorite because <laughs> I'm, I'm for all of the boys. I'm the rest of the boys' auntie, but I'm his mama. So when Melo hits the floor, it's, let's go, Melo! Uh -oh. Let's uh -oh. go! What, what, what kind of basketball mom would you say she is? Well, How would you word it? She, she's very loud. <laughs> I, could, I could hear her from anywhere on the court. <laughs> I'd be having to tell her, like, after the game, like, quiet down, like, just chill. Like, <laughs> be, uh... I think I'm like the Kim Mulkey, if you know the LSU coach. <laughs> I'm like the Kim Mulkey of the moms. Okay. Because I think they need that energy. I do, too. I do. I do. If he ever told me that he absolutely did not like it, right. I don't know what I would do, but I'm just saying, he's never said that, so it's all working out, but the referees remember me. Yeah, because you're going to make this call, and you're going to make it right, okay? 
you know. I, I, we got the sentiment of how you are on the court. <laughs> I know we're going to expect great things from you, young man. Thank you for being here. Thank, now, thank you for thinking we got me cool, right? <laughs> and Monica, thank you for being here. Will you no, come back again to see us? I have got to come back with the album is seen. All right, I'm going to hold you to it. Please. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.